Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev. Uh, I welcome you all to today's session. Uh, Maharaj, will you be continuing with the Bhagavatam verses or there is any other? Time? Yeah, we'll continue okay. with, the, with the verses on, uh, on okay. Balila, Damodar Lila. Okay, Maharaj, I will share it. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Continuation of the pastime of Krishna stealing butter, as mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 9th chapter, we're at verse number 21. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nayam Sukha Po Bhagavan Vehinam Gopika Sutaha Janinam Chatma Bhutanam Yantra Bhaktim Vatam Iha Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna The Son of Mother Yasoda is accessible to the devotees engaged in spontaneous loving service. But he is not easily accessible to mental speculators, to, to, those, strive, to those striving for self-realization by severe austerities and penances, or to those who consider the body the same as the self. Read it again. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, the son of Madhya Soto, is accessible to devotees engaged in spontaneous love and service, but he is not as easily acceptable to mental speculators, those striving for self-realization by severe austerities and penances, or to those who consider the body the same as the self. Srila Prabhupada's purple. <clears throat> Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead as the son of Mother Yasoda is very easily available to devotees, but not to tapasis, yogis, jnanis, and others who have a bodily conception of life. Although they may sometimes be called Santa Bhaktas, real bhakta begins with Dasyaras. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yayatam Mang Prapadyante, Tamstataiva Bhajami Aham, Mama Vartmananu Vartante, Manusha Partha Sarva As they sur as living entities surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, the son of Prita. Everyone is seeking Krishna, for he is the super soul of all individual souls. Everyone loves his body and wants to protect it because he is within the body as the soul. And everyone loves the soul because the soul is part and parcel of the supreme soul, super soul. Therefore, everyone is actually seeking to achieve happiness by reviving his relationship with the super soul. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 1515, By all the Vedas is I who am to be known. Therefore, the karmis, Gyanis, yogis, and saintly persons are all seeking Krishna. But by following in the footsteps of devotees who are in direct relationship with Krishna, especially the inhabitants of Vrindavan, one can reach the supreme position of associating with Krishna. As it is said, Vrindavan parikya yam pada ekam dagachchiti. Krishna does not leave Vrindavan even for a moment. The Vrindavan Vasis, Mother Yasoda, Krishna's friends, and Krishna's conjugal lovers, the younger gopis with whom he dances, have very intimate relationships with Krishna. And if one follows 
in the footsteps of these devotees, Krishna is available. Although the Nitya Siddha's expansions of Krishna's always remain with Krishna, if those engaged in Sadhana Siddha follow in the footsteps of Krishna's Nitya Siddha's associates, such Sadhana Siddha's can easily attain Krishna without difficulty. But there are those who are attached to bodily concepts of life. <clears throat> Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, for example, have very prestigious positions, and thus they have the sense of being very exalted Ishwaras. In other words, because Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva are guna avatars and have exalted positions, they have some small sense of being like Krishna. But the pure devotees who inhabit Vrindavan do not possess any bodily conception. They are fully dedicated to the service of the Lord in sublime affection, Prema. <clears throat> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has therefore recommended Prema Pumartha Mahan. The highest perfection of life is Prema pure love in relationship with Krishna. <clears throat> and Mother Yasoda appears to be topmost of devotees who have attained this perfection. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya. Don't move me. Leave it where it is. Leave it, leave it in the same position it is. Go down farther. Go down where it was when I left off. Yeah, right there. Stop there. And go up a little bit. It's too far. It's too far down. One more. One more. There you go. Okay, leave it there. Mm -hmm. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vengamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani, Pacharya Ne Nirvase Sasunyavari, Pasyatya De Satarine. Vansha Kaupatu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Prevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha. Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Rasi Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare hmm. So here it's interesting that the four types of uh, Persons are mentions the tapasis, the yogis, the jnanis, and ultimately the bhaktas. Mm -hmm. Those who perform great austerity, or those who drill the rep respiration in order to control the mind and senses and focus on God within the heart. The jnanis, those who philosophically um, practice the process of the negation and ultimately come to the point that everything in the material world is temporary and it's a product of illusion. And then we have the bhaktas. The real bhakta begins with dasya ras, what Prabhupada is saying in the very beginning, these other groups do not engage in devotional service. They are more like shanta bhaktas. They may have some appreciation for the Supreme Personality of Godhead or for the appreciation of spiritual knowledge and practice, but because they don't practically engage in loving devotional service to the Lord, they are not considered to be bhaktas in the real sense of the word. But Prabhupada goes on to explain, uh, of course, he illustrates that by mentioning this verse in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, which is a very, uh, I would say, important verse the devotees understand. If we read that verse and you can see how important it is and how difficult it is to understand it. As living entities surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, so some of preta. 
So what does that mean? Everyone follows my path. We can see people don't follow the path of God, but what does it mean that there's nothing outside of the creation or the manifestation of the existence of everything? There are two things called the creation, that which comes by way of the three modes of material energy, uh, inspired by the, by the power of the Lord in his creative principle as Mahavishnu, and coming all the way down to Lord Brahma, and then, then through the progenitors, and gradually the manifestation of the material energy in the three modes of material nature. So that's one aspect of the Lord's uh, existence, or, or we might you could call it creation. And the other one is that which is not, which is eternal, that is never created and never annihilated, which is mentioned in the eighth chapter. It's beyond the three realms, and the three modes of material energy. Both are aspects of the Lord's existence in terms of it is his energies. So therefore, when he says everyone one follows my path in all respects. Everyone is within one of those two energies, either the spiritual or material or a combination of both. Therefore, whatever one does or desires, everyone is following Krishna's path. And what this verse is actually saying is according to the nature of that desire and the activities people perform, they get a reward accordingly, either within the three modes or outside of the three modes, which is the spiritual realm or devotional devotion to the Supreme Lord. These tapasis, yogis, and jnanis, they're on, the, they're on the borderline of material and spiritual. They're mostly in the material, but still they perform some activities to get out of the material, but they do not come to the conclusion of activities, and that is to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, it says, Aruna Krichchena, Pradam Padam Padantiyada, Nadritya Usmaya Ahangrayaha. They uh, climb high on the spiritual uh, process, not on the spiritual platform, but on the process. But then Padantiyada means because they don't engage in loving devotional service. But that the Adam means they fall down again. They go back into the material realm to struggle again with the material energy. So therefore, uh, although everyone follows Krishna's path, only the bhaktas get the reward. In other words, here we see, uh, we can use the example, a person is living within the state, and the state has different departments within it. And one of the departments is the prison house. So the prison house is still within the state. And so those who follow the state by disobeying the state, in other words, not following the instructions of the state and creating their own, they wind up being in a marginal position or in a, a position of suffering and they go to the prison house, but they're still within the confines of the state. <laughs> So in the same way, no one can get outside of the energies of Krishna because everything is within the energies of Krishna, either directly spiritual or indirectly material. So only those who engage in devotional service, and it says here, what is the supreme or what we say quick path of devotional service is to follow in the footsteps of great souls. So here's where we come to the process of bhakti. Following in the footsteps of great souls means to accept a great soul as one's guidance, follow that instructions, or in this case, follow the mood and the direction of those who are Vrindavan Bhastis. We, as Prabhupada says here, Mother Yasoda, Krishna's friends, his conjugal lovers, the younger gopis, all of them have an intimate relationship with Krishna and by following in the footsteps, that means learning what, how they serve the Supreme Lord, worshiping them according to the 
praying the, for, for their mercy and engaging according to the instructions given by one's spiritual master, who is also a resident of Vrindavan. And in that way, one engages in devotional service directly connecting with Krishna in his highest aspect of himself, Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham, which we are reading here about Mother Yasoda and, and Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And Prabhupada wants to make this point clear. And so he so shows us that even though you have great personalities like Lord Brahma, I mean, Lord Brahma is the greatest personality within the universe. He has a big position. He has great intelligence. He has great amount of power. Lord Shiva also, even, even more so than Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva. But none of them, because they have such pre pre prestigious positions, they, uh, they have some small sense of being like little Krishnas. <laughs> They're very powerful. But as Krishna says here, they have some sense of being like Krishna. And they don't have that uh, mood of the residents of Vrindavan. But they do great service and they're very dear to the Lord, but not nearly as dear as those in the Vrindavan mood. And that's why we follow Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Sri, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Mahi Anya. He is Vrindavan in its, in its complete perfection. He is Radharani, his mood with Krishna as the, his existence. <clears throat> so he is Krishna with Radha's mood. So he is the highest aspect of the absolute truth that, that comes to the material world, engages in the aspects of Vrindavan Leelas, and teaches by example how to reach the mood of Vrindavan. Which is we do, therefore, those of us who follow the Gaudiya uh, Madhva Sampradaya, we also add Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and therefore we are in following in the footsteps. So, our whole process is to attain Sri Vrindavan Dham, following the footsteps of great souls, such as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the residents of Sri Vrindavan Dham. This is all nicely explained in Srimad Bhagavatam and especially in Nectar of Devotion, the process of developing Vrindavan consciousness. And of course, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord, Golokere, Golokera, Premadana, Harinam, Shankirtan, Ratin Jan, Milo Kena Upai. The chanting of the holy names of the Lord has descended from Goloka Dham, just the highest realm of spiritual existence. That chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra contains only the pure names of Radha and Krishna in its essence. And by one who chants that under the guidance of the spiritual master who directs one accordingly on how to approach the holy name, and one, if one follows that carefully, one can develop the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. By, by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one who perfects their chanting or comes to the stage of almost perfecting their chanting, they take shelter of Srimati Radharani and her associates in Sri Vrindavan Dham and gradually. What is that taking shelter? That means we develop an attraction and attachment to hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. And that develops the mood within the heart and mind of a devotee, and he gradually attains the position of becoming an eternal resident of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So, and we say here, we see here <clears throat> how it's so nicely explained uh, how exalted the residents of Vrindavan are. Although there are many other exalted personalities, they, uh, they don't get that same uh, relationship with Krishna in a very intimate and loving way as the residents of Vrindavan, which is available through Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. 
Krishna Varnam Tusa Krishna Sangupanga Saparshadam Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayi Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha Ramyakas. Uh, let me see, what is that one verse? Ramya. Hmm. I want to find this verse, if we can find this particular verse. Um, the first word is Ramya, R A M Y A. And this really gives the clear understanding of the connection between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramya. It's a verse. Uh, uh, Maharaj, is it a Bhagavad Gita verse or Bhagavad? No. Oh, there it is. Sri Devi brought it up. Ramya Kastya Rupasanam Rajavadu Varga Kalpita Srimad Bhagavatam Yadavsit. Thank you, Sri Devi. Bring that verse up along with the transla translation. If Sri Devi can post it, it would be good. Okay. I will make her co-host. Can you share it, Mataji? It's so important, this verse, in relationship to this particular verse we're speaking of. Ramya Kastya Rupasana Rajavadu. Yeah. It's nowhere in the Bhagavatam, but it's in a particular, it's called the Chaitanya Madhusya. There's a particular scripture, it's called Chaitanya Man Manusha. Mm. That's it. Yeah, Chaitanya, there you go. You, you had the uh, thing. You go farther, you come to the We'll come to the uh, actual reference, Chaitanya Manusha. Go up where you were here in the top, yeah. May, may Chaitanya Manjusa. Yeah, keep going on there. Yeah, right there. Keep going on this. After Srimad Bhagavatam, it comes with the reference. You had it, but then you stopped going in that direction. Is this one? No, I'm sure. No, it's not. It, yeah. uh, in this, Maharaj, are you asking about it, this? It's in here, in right where you are now. You just okay. keep going farther along the road there. This is all from the lectures, Maharaj. Uh, no, you have to, we have to get the verse. Yeah. I will just check it for Maharaj one second. Just I can do it myself if you make me the co-host. Sure, Maharaj. I will do that. I have it here. It's in it's my. Yeah, I made you co-host, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Sri Chaitanya Mata Man Madhusa. Let's see. Let's see, here's the verse, I think. Here we go. You see it? Oh, no, Maharaj. You can't see it? I put it up on my screen. 
No, we cannot see it yet, Maharaj. Hmm. What do I have to do to get it up on the get it up on the screen? Guru Maharaj, you have to press that click on the green button, which is share screen. Which green button is that? Share Write screen. down. Share okay. screen. Okay, here we go. There it is. Now you can see it. Yes. Arano Bhagavan Vrajay Satana Yasta Dharma Vrindavan Brahmya Kasim Pasana Brajavadu Vargana Vakalpita Srimad Bhagavata Purana Amalam Prema Pumarta Mahan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Mata Idam Tatada Napara. Yeah, okay, go down the page. Okay, I'll do that, I guess. So here's the different points in the verse. One should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna's transcendental ball of Vrindavan is equally a worshipful. The topmost form of worship is performed by the gopis of Vrindavan. Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. Pure love of God, Prema, is the ultimate goal of life. That is the translation in a somewhat succinct understanding. So you have everything here. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, let me go to another, uh, another verse. And uh, uh, I'll find one more aspect of that same thing here. Okay. And this is a little complicated. Okay, let me one more here. Okay, I can do the share screening again. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, here. Okay, it is the conclusive opinion of Lord Chaitanya, the most worshipful form of Lord is that of Sri Krishna, the son of Vrindavan, Nanda Maharaj. Vrindavan is the top most worshipful abode. The highest and most pleasing type of worship with Krishna is done by the Rajagopis. Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless authority on everything, and Krishna Prema is the fifth and high school. This is the opinion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and most important Krishna, who is the son of Maharaj. Rajay Shatanayan Gokulesha is to be worshipped, not Vasudev Tanayan. This is by Gorky, Gorgo Vinda Maharaj, who's explaining that. So, in in that verse that we are speaking about in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we're getting a, a glimpse of this particular verse. And this is the ultimate principle of that here, everything is in this particular verse. Therefore, we follow in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the son of Nanda Maharaj in Vrindavan, playing the role of his own devotee to worship himself in that mood of Vrindavan. And then this, and here it says the highest and most pleasing type of worship is worship of Krishna that is done by the Rajagopis. And we have uh, Yasoda. Mother Yasoda is a Rajagopi. She is in the word parental affection, but she is the topmost of all in the category of parental affection. She's eternal resident of Vrindavan. And <clears throat> Everything we need to know, we're reading it from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the topmost and most authoritative uh, scripture on everything of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan. And to love Krishna is the highest and fifth goal of life. And this is all given in this particular verse <clears throat> and illustrated by Srila Prabhupada's purport from where we just uh, were discussing. 
Okay, so we can return back to our uh, Okay, so just to conclude a little bit of a summary on that particular verse that we're discussing, ultimately one has to follow in the footsteps of the great souls, the residents of Sri Vrindavan Dham, chant the holy names of the Lord, and hear about the pastimes of Sri Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham, and worship those the devotees who are eternal residents of Sri Vrindavan Dham, such as Mother Yasoda, uh, the cowherd boys, particularly certain cowherd boys like Sri Dham and Ma, Madhu Mangal, and the gopis headed by Srimati Radharani, Lalita, and Vishakha. So this is our mood of worship given to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if we follow it, it's very simple to follow. And that requires regular hearing and glorifying the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham through hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam and the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is, as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati concludes in his discussion on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is living Bhagavatam. He is non-different than Bhagavatam and the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the exact replica of Srimad Bhagavatam in, uh, in action, you might say. His life is Bhagavatam itself. So we study the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his worship of the residents of Sri Vrindavan Dham. And then we will attain the the highest platform, the fifth goal, as explained by uh, this particular verse, Prema Pumartha Maha. And to attain that stage means to attain perfection in spiritual life. Okay, any questions or comments? Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for this session and explaining about this verse. Sri Devi Mataji has raised hand. Mataji, you want to go ahead? Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Brinda. Please accept my humble obeisances. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for again reminding us how important it is to follow in the footsteps of these great souls. But sometimes it seems as though we can never ever reach such an exalted position of falling purely in love with Krishna, given our conditioned state. For example, yesterday we were speaking about Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj, who was so renounced that he would sometimes just eat mud from the Ganges river bank or just some parched rice like that. And then after the class, one young Riyasa asked me, he said, how can we ever, you know, do all these things given where we are today? Are we supposed to follow this example and eat mud from the river bank? And <laughs> I said, <laughs> I don't think we can jump to that state, nor is anyone asking us to eat mud. We are just, just glorifying these great souls because they were so purely in love with Krishna that it didn't matter what they ate, what they wore, how they slept like that. Am no, I well, let me let me give you let me give you an, an understanding of that statement. If you go back down to the gangs of Vrindavan and you eat mud, you will be eating mud. But these great souls, they're not eating mud. They're tasting the the, the chintamani energy of the dham, which is non-different than the spiritual world. And so you can't imitate that. That's something you don't imitate. And we hear from these great souls so we understand what is, what is perfection and how they illustrate that perfection in their life. But our process is Mahajano um, Yena uh, Katasapanta follow in the footsteps of the great souls and execute the process according to the instructions of the spiritual master. If we want to take up some additional austerities, that should be done with great understanding of 
um, my, my particular position and whether it is simply a fault, uh, an expression of the false ego or some sentiment or is actually a st austerity that will help me uh, move forward in Krishna consciousness. So there is a new Sharan and a new Karan. A new Sharan means to follow in the footsteps. A new Karan means to imitate. Imitation is cheap. Imitation is what it is. It's imitation. So we can always increase the level of our devotional service, but we should be doing it in relationship to the process like that. We can always increase our rounds. We can visit the holy places. We can do additional services. We can try to cultivate more of the qualities that are indicative of the quality and characteristic of a devotee. So many ways we can increase. We should not try to imitate, especially persons like Gorky Short or Babaji Maharaj. That's uh, way, that would be complete pretentiousness. Even mm. those who were associating with him could not follow him. What to speak of us. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. I've written all this down so that I can get back to him and explain it better. But thank you for giving us an understanding that we are not meant to imitate these persons, but we are supposed to feel inspired to do more bhakti and to go deeper and improve our own Krishna consciousness. That is the point in hearing about these great souls. Correct. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Because it was a little uh, uh, difficult what to answer and how to answer. But this, this helps me. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. My humble Who's that? Amatiji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I join Sri Devi. Say yeah. 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 Make sure it's warm enough when I get there. Yeah. When uh, I want to uh, ask you, when exactly you come to warm? I am coming to Zagreb on Friday. Um, Friday, and I'll be in Cro Croatia until the next Tuesday. Tuesday. So a yep. week from tomorrow. Okay, Hare Krishna. I will prepare for your welcoming, Hare Krishna. <laughs> She's all excited, Guru Maharaj, and now I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know if you're going to chastise me. <laughs> well, if, it, if I do, it's good for you. Krishna. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. But but since, since you want to get chast since you want to get chastised, then I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'm really scared of that. Really scared of that. I think I will just die if you do if you chastise me. Praise and blame is all the same, the only difference in the name. Thank you, Maharaj, for that answer. Maharaj, what is that word you used? Uh, Chintamani Dham, energy, something you used. Chintamani Dham? No, you used word for, um, because they are, why they are eating the mud. You used a word, actually. Uh, can you please say that again? They're tasting Chintamani Dham, which is the spiritual world. Okay. okay. Energy of Chintamani Dham means spiritual world. That's what it means. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a beautiful answer. Hmm. So, devotees, anyone else has any question, comment, or realization? Please go ahead.
Uh, Maharaj, I have a small question. Uh, it is mentioned in the verse that uh, they have given the example. It, uh, in the purport, the example is given of Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, that they are thinking that they are like little Krishnas, right? But the Prajavasis have the higher consciousness. Um, so how but in Lord Shiva is called as a Vaishnavana Yathashambhu? How yeah. you so yeah. Yes, he's the greatest of all Vaishnavas. Why? Because he does the work of the Vaishnavas by picking up the most fallen and making them into devotees of Krishna. And that's why he's considered the greatest Vaishnava because of the service he does to the Supreme Lord. Hmm. Okay, so we see many of the devotees who are previously worshipping Lord Shiva and now they are worshipping Krishna. So it's uh, because of the mercy of Lord Shiva, they are in Krishna consciousness. Can we say that? Many. You can't say everyone, but many. Okay. Okay. And Shiva is also called the father of all living entities. Hmm. Okay. Because he... He is the he is the father of the material energy. Mm. Yeah. But he works under the guidance of Krishna. Krishna. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. It is clear now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone has any question? Or realization, please go ahead. Okay, yes. yeah, uh, I don't see any question, Maharaj. No. Okay. Uh, so, should we uh, stop here, Maharaj, for today, or? Uh, uh, is Sri Mati still there? I don't see her. No, she's not here now. Oh, okay. Okay, tomorrow is, um, yeah, okay. tomorrow we'll continue. Okay. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and association today and explaining about this verse. Thank you. Thank you. All good. Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada. Jai. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, if I may humbly request one small favor, please, from you. Would you mind checking your email and answering a, that important question I asked for my Grihastha seminar coming up very soon, if you don't mind? Which, which email is on? My second one? Yeah, your regular Braj CMS, uh, uh, gmail com. that email I sent you. It's titled An Important Question. Okay, I'll get to that. Thank today. you. That will be so helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Continue with.